Good afternoon. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. John Gluckman from Six Wave. How are you? Fantastic. Always a pleasure to be with you, Tracy. Well, I'm going to hit you with the headline from our last story done by Dean Bristow. He writes, will Six Wave help prevent a fourth wave? All right. We all want to know. Dr. Gluckman? Well, um, you know, our technology is mostly in helping to uh, detect and track where the virus is going. And we are moving as quickly as we can to have our first deployable uh, products. Uh, we started our uh, next phase of the effort and uh, expect to have working prototypes at the end of that. Uh, the team right now is uh, starting evaluation of the detection capabilities for the, for the variant strains uh, to ensure that uh, when we move toward the uh, compliance testing and independent testing that they'll be able to detect all of the active strains. So um, that we'll be able to prevent things because uh, the virus will do what the virus will do, but we certainly hope to be able to assist uh, with the medical community tracking, tracing, and identifying where, where the virus is. Well, and speaking of tracking and tracing, I'm going to quote him because I, I liked how he dumbed it down, and I think many of us out there in Investor Intel land will appreciate this. Dean writes, last week the company announced it has successfully demonstrated choler cholerometric detection of SARS COVID-2. And this is apparently target substance within a test sample by means of color. So he says, for example, green equals COVID-19, blue equals influenza, red rhinovirus. I like the way he did this. Is that <laughs> correct? And can you add to that, please? Sure. So we're, uh, we're currently working with the colometric detection as it's a very fast pathway for us to bring the technology to market. And there are several kinds of dyes that you use. Right now, we've been testing with a fluorescent dye. So uh, you, uh, you shine a UV light on it and it fluoresces back in green. But we're now working with another company that has several additional dyes and they do work in different wavelengths. So as we expand the number of viruses that we're detecting from just COVID to include, say, influenza or rhinovirus or, or others, we can use different colometric tags for each of those different sensors so that you could in fact have a color palette that would be associated with particular viruses. And uh, so as part of this next phase two project or phase three, I guess, that we're in, uh, we'll also be uh, starting work on demonstrating that we can uh, also grab the influenza virus and we'll probably use a, a different colometric tag in for that. So for those of you out there that want to learn more about this particular test, the news release dated April 14th actually has a diagram. Of course, this isn't the most recent news, all right? Uh, you guys are putting out news. You're clipping very quickly. You must be, I, you must not be sleeping. <laughs> so let's talk about the news from last week. I'm just trying to find uh, the news from last week. Uh, an LOI, uh, this is April 19th, with Hallucinix Life Sciences, Inc. Why don't you tell us the highlights of this particular news release? Yeah, fantastic. So, you know, we're, uh, we're moving forward with our cannabis projects in, uh, called the Affinity Line, uh, where we're purifying cannabinoids out of cannabis extracts. Well, one of the, the latest, uh, you know, high priority medical research that's being done with lots of positive results is the use of hallucinogenics, in particular psilocybin and some of those for treatment of atypical uh, depression and uh, PTSD. And Hallucinex is uh, a leader in that field and has some uh, ongoing trials. But one of the things that they want to explore is how do we effectively purify uh, the psilocybin and some of the other components that they think are going to be important in their, um, in their research and with the efficacy of the hallucinogenics. <clears throat> they wanted a purification technology. For us, <clears throat> excuse me, for us, this is really just putting in a different bead, a different molecularly imprinted bead into our affinity system. So essentially a small affinity system with those beads, you would do the extracts from mushrooms uh, that contain the psilocybin and other key components. You would process it through 
the action system, and then you would send it through our affinity system to, uh, to extract just the, the molecules of interest and give them back in a pure form, which they can then compound into their particular formulations. So we're really excited about getting into this, uh, I think, really exciting and growing space. And it's a logical extension of our, our health, and, and, uh, our health and, and medical aids. Well, it's, it's clear. We've talked about how you have the proprietary technology at Six Wave. In fact, you have an extensive catalog of proprietary technology. Can I ask how you're handling the business development side? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that go, you know, who's making the deals and prioritizing the deals for you? Well, we're trying to stay within, you know, sort of our, our health services line and then our mining line. Uh, where the good news is that the Ixos product for our gold mining is, is pretty much out of its development stages, and now it's in the deployment stages. We've been focusing in on a few companies in order to get the first gold mines up and running actually with our technology. And then once we have that, you know, of course, some of the mines we're dealing with have multiple properties, which means potential for multiple installations. Some of them are smaller, but they happen to work a little bit more agilely in terms of picking up new technology. So uh, we do have a business development unit that's managed by uh, our team in Salt Lake City for expanding the, uh, that work. On the health, and, and the health side, of course, we're at an earlier stage with our development and launch of the products. And while um, we haven't done any direct marketing, uh, we do have uh, several representatives that want to help us take the Affinity product to market. Uh, as we move into the hallucinogenics, there'll be a different set of people that move into that. And as far as things go with AMIPS, we're exploring a number of different options there. Uh, it's not particularly clear to us now that the best way for us to proceed would be to try and market and sell our own branded products in that area. Because as we go to a mask, for example, you know, 3M is making millions and millions of masks, uh, and so are other companies, and it may be a, a better position for us to try and license the technology to those kinds of players that are already dominant in the space and have all the distribution capabilities that we need. So there are lots of pathways to market. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gluckman from Six Wave. Tracy, thank you as always.